Hello, this is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. I am Osama Albini. And I am Jonas Holderman. And we want you to know that if you don't believe in God, you are not alone. Right here in East Tennessee, you can find free thinking atheists and agnostics. This is a show for them and for people committed to a life rooted in science and unfettered by supernatural beliefs. On today's show, we will speak about uh, our experience, mainly right now. I'm going to be the only one talking about my experience at uh, the 2016 Reason Rally, which was recently held in Washington, D.C. But first, we want to tell viewers about the show sponsors. The Atheist, uh, the Atheist Society of Knoxville frequently has a fun meetup at a bar or eatery. Tonight's meetup is at Barley's on the Old City. Um, starting around 5.30. Look for the silver-jacketed copy of The God Delusion standing upright on the table. And as Matt Delonte um, at the Atheist Experience says, everyone is welcome to our happy hour of food, drink, and conversation. But if you plan to preach, proselytize, provoke, or punch, please don't. The Rationalists of East Tennessee have several regular monthly meetings. The first and third Sunday mornings of the month are usually lectures with lively roundtable discussions. The second Sunday, we hold a Skeptics Book Club. On the fourth Sunday, we're mixing it up, sometimes with a get-together we call a Reflections Meeting. It features a potluck lunch uh, in someone's home. Sometimes we meet to play board games, watch a movie, or similar activities. Just uh, last week, we had a picnic for the National Day of uh, Reason. Uh, later in the show, we will give you our websites to visit for additional details, including times and locations. Okay, in the news, <coughs> and uh, I'll comment first on that uh, picnic that we talked about. The uh, recent summer solstice party was a, a great success. It included members of Rationalists of East Tennessee, Atheist Society of Knoxville, and Sunday Assembly. Uh, there was good food, conversation, swimming, and games. Most welcome were the 20 children who, I'm told, came. Well, my daughter had a very fun time at the pool, and I can attest that uh, Carl and Alita had a really uh, wonderful party. They were really wonderful hosts. Well, there, there were certainly a lot of uh, kids running around. I, uh, I'm taking the 20 <laughs> count uh, from Alita. Okay, <clears throat> later this week, there will be a second meeting of the recently formed East Tennessee chapter of the Freedom from Religion Foundation. Its purpose is to promote the constitutional separation of church and state and to educate the public on uh, matters uh, relating to non-theism. Uh, we have, uh, 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 sadly, we have been notified by CTV that the Knoxville Beer Board will likely change their monthly meetings from 6 p.m. to 5 p.m. If they do, these meetings will preempt uh, our Free Thought Forum programs, uh, 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 and this would be starting once a month, starting uh, July the 19th. Well, we unfortunately have other uh, uh, sad news that we can uh, talk about, which is uh, the unfortunate massacre that happened in uh, Orlando, which was perpetrated by uh, a gunman, and uh, um, uh, it had a casualty uh, uh, toll of about uh, 50 people, if we include the perpetrator, and uh, um, uh, 49 people who ha um, or 53 people who were wounded. Uh, now, this is a very unfortunate uh, 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 occurrence, as it is the biggest massacre in American history. Uh, uh, I, I, I have heard that uh, statement made, and I uh, 
also have uh, heard a clarification in modern American history because mm -hmm. uh, we have had some horrendous events in historical times uh, related to uh, Native Americans and uh, right, right. Uh, if if we probably were to include something like that, that's uh, going to uh, appear a little bit uh, small compared to what happened at uh, uh, those times. But, but with, within the last century, yeah, within the last century, probably that that would have been the biggest mass shooting that uh, uh, we can talk about. And um, uh, the background for this is a very uh, uh, interesting background. It was uh, perpetrated by an Afghani man by the name of uh, Omar Mateen. He is uh, he was 29 years old, and he is uh, originally from Afghanistan. Um, uh, he's an American citizen. However, he seems to uh, still have uh, uh, issues related to um, uh, uh, maybe some remnants of uh, uh, what he had uh, uh, brought with him. Uh, uh, but, but, but reports are that he was born in the United States. His father immigrated. Right. So, so the, the, the idea then is that uh, uh, we're talking about an, uh, uh, an Afghani American who uh, 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 seems to have been in, in a certain situation where he committed the massacre. But uh, um, when he was talking to the police uh, um, uh, during uh, uh, the events, he mentioned that he uh, was uh, paying allegiance to ISIL and uh, that the entire thing was uh, basically um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, perpetrated in their name. And uh, later on, uh, ISIL seems to have adopted that, even though there were very uh, um, uh, weak connections and it wasn't possible to say that he was uh, doing it um, uh, after instigation by ISIL. However, it's really hard to separate that event from uh, uh, the idea that he was trying uh, to do it out of some form of uh, religious motivation. Now, uh, uh, some people, like uh, uh, people on the right, would start saying this is <coughs> something that happened as a result of uh, um, uh, religious uh, uh, extremism, which is uh, possibly to some extent true, but there are also possibly other ev uh, events in his life that uh, uh, precipitated uh, uh, this event. But uh, if we look at what was happening on the left and on the right, looking at uh, this event, people on the right were trying to frame it in the form of uh, uh, Islam, people on the left were not mentioning the word Islam at all. I think there should be some kind of a middle ground acknowledging that there is a form of extreme Islam, Islamism, that um, uh, was the one mainly responsible for at least the religious aspect of this, because probably there are also personal and societal uh, aspects that uh, resulted in this. But, but we have uh, some similarities with an event which happened here in Knoxville some years ago <coughs> when a, uh, a, a man came into the Tennessee Valley Unitarian mm -hmm. Universalist Church and, um, uh, and, and opened fire killing two people mm -hmm. and, uh, and wounding uh, quite a few others. Yes. Now, <coughs> he said that he did it because he hated liberals. Mm -hmm. But now, if we look back a little bit more, uh, the church had started uh, a program that they called Spectrum Cafe, yes. where uh, gay teenagers could uh, meet together in a um, uh, in a social setting. Mm -hmm. So, so we see uh, the the gay social setting at Tennessee Valley that may have prompted this this shooter and a. Uh, similar kind of uh, thing in Orlando, quite apart from the religious aspects of it. Right. Uh, well, you can also uh, have some Christian angle on this. There is that guy, uh, Stephen Anderson. Uh, he immediately jumped at the opportunity and started saying 50 pedophiles less or something to that effect. So uh, he, he also uh, was talking uh, uh, from the same kind of uh, 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 reasoning that uh, the Muslim was also talking about, possibly. Uh, 
but it's really hard to, to reduce it to uh, um, religion. But to also say that religion has nothing to do with it, that's also completely unfair. Yeah, but because um, various uh, religious groups um, uh, get into ideas of, of morality. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, so there's the uh, atmosphere that uh, uh, the uh, gay people are immoral and uh, expressing immorality. Uh, and and um, uh, so you, you can't really separate it from the, uh, the, the these, these uh, hatred towards groups from the uh, uh, religious area. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can say a few things about the possible religious uh, connection. Um, now, ISIL has been executing gays and has been doing so by hurling them from the top of high buildings and then throwing rubble on top. Basically, what n that's an interpretation of one of the verses in the Quran in which it is describing uh, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, where God uh, supposedly has uh, um, um, cursed these people by punishing them in, in that manner. He uh, flipped the town upside down, and that's why they throw people from the top of buildings. And so when, when, uh, 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 when, the, uh, when the killer was uh, pledging uh, allegiance to um, uh, ISIL, he was actually doing so out of this uh, affiliation, even though we do not see in Muslim countries mass killings of, of gays. They are oppressed, and they are not able to express themselves, but we do not see something like this. And he has done it in the month of Ramadan which means that he was possibly trying to get the biggest heavenly reward as possible. Hmm. I, I perhaps mistakenly think of Ramadan as a, a, a period of introspection where one uh, fasts during the day to better understand the uh, situation of people who uh, go hungry. Well, that's... And, and so it seems strange that... Uh, in 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 this period that should be devoted to reflection that well I, unfortunately uh, Ramadan is also associated in the minds of Muslims with other things as well many of the major battles that uh, Muslims uh, consider to be pivotal in their history even at the time of Muhammad happened during the month of Ramadan so battles that happen during the month of Ramadan are considered uh, uh, extra holy because if you martyr yourself during that month, uh, uh, you have a bigger chance of going uh, to heaven and getting a bigger uh, heavenly reward. So uh, if we want to consider it from a religious point of view, that is almost certainly some kind of a, a consideration that the killer has had. Yeah, uh, I, I guess as an outsider of uh, uh, that faith and, <laughs> and most of them, um, uh, I, I have been led to believe that there are two aspects of Islam. That it started out as a very peaceful, uh, progressive uh, kind of approach that women were given uh, property rights and so on initially. Uh, that they didn't. Well, that's. Uh, uh, and then things, when, when, when they got involved in the wars and things like that, then. Uh, you saw the other side. Uh, there, there is some truth to it, but it's it also can includes some misconceptions. Perhaps that by itself would be an interesting topic um, uh, for a different show. But uh, just for the record, uh, they view what happened before Islam as a complete era of ignorance where women were oppressed and had no rights. That's not entirely true. Okay, so I guess we can uh, move on a little bit further. And, and our topic for today is the Reason Rally. Um, Osama uh, uh, went to the rally. Um, actually, I'm kind of a fill-in host, <laughs> and uh, uh, we were supposed to have Brad and Faithless. Faithless, Forrest, uh, 
contacted me this morning mm. and saying, well, he, he had been sick last Sunday and said he couldn't make it, and then Brad might have core trouble. Yeah. So uh, apparently that might have been the case. So um, uh, again, I will do my best to keep you on the straight <laughs> path as you tell us about the uh, uh, Reason Rally. Now, the, uh, this Reason Rally for 2016 uh, is a, uh, a, a, a there, the, there was one held in 2012. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so this was supposed to be uh, um, doing that over again. And uh, uh, so maybe we can see what might have changed mm -hmm. uh, and, what, and what might uh, still be the same. Probably, it, 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 if you view it in that respect, it might have been something uh, that would be modeled after the Woodstock experience, where we, uh, you would have <laughs> that kind of gathering where people with uh, common interests have this uh, uh, um, a very intense experience together. And uh, for me personally, if I want to qualify the experience, it does it does fall into that category. I, I have not been to the 2012. Uh, rally, so I, I have uh, no experience there. But I've also heard people who went there who found it uh, uh, to be a really an important experience, a wonderful experience that they have had. Well, uh, tell, tell us about the setting. Uh, I have only infrequently been to uh, Washington, D.C. I was there last summer uh, with a group from uh, Knoxville who went for the International Children's Festival. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the group of kids I were with were involved in the closing ceremonies of that. And so we walked around Washington, D.C., but uh, it was held on this big open space, mm -hmm. uh, which I gather is called the Mall. And um, uh, it, it was interesting to see so much open space in a city that's being built, that the buildings are appearing everywhere. Right. Uh, they, they have some kind of a construction, actually, that uh, I, I've been there in 2013, and that construction, I don't know if it was the same or it has extended, but it, it, it was uh, still there. They were uh, building stuff. Um, and so it, even though it's uh, uh, an old city, relatively speaking, it's uh, still pretty much alive in terms of that. Um, so when when gathering at a place of historical importance, um, uh, like uh, the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, y you, you do feel that anything that is supposed to happen there must have uh, significance that uh, 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 is eventually going to be quite deep. And um, we, we were not exactly at the steps. We were a little bit uh, uh, further away, closer to the reflecting pools. But um, uh, the entire thing was uh, really a nice sense of having people for the first time, for me personally, um, uh, that are usually represented as a minority. For the first time, you look at people around you and they have more or less the same kind of uh, thought and uh, you are in a place that has some historical significance. And so um, uh, you end up feeling that eventually uh, um, you have some kind of a sense of belonging to this uh, bigger group and that uh, we are a majority of uh, uh, some sort, even though <laughs> uh, yeah. in, in, in reality um, uh, uh, you look at uh, how uh, um, atheists and free thinkers are considered, you, they, ca they cannot eventually reach uh, um, uh, public office. They uh, cannot be elected usually. It's very hard for them. But at that moment when, when you're there, you, you, you do feel a sense of community. So I have in my mind a picture like a rock concert with a big stage and speakers and uh, people gathered mm -hmm. in front. Uh, is, is that... Uh, Pre yeah, pr pretty much so. Um, and um, uh, the the moment we we entered, we we came. Uh, I I came along with uh, two other members of uh, the group, and that by itself was a, a very interesting experience. Having driven to D.C. and spent all the time uh, talking and getting to know each other, um, but once we arrived. Um, um, uh, 
we were we were basically greeted by by singing and from afar you would have <laughs> thought that it was a church gathering so mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there there is that sense in which you would have uh, um, that community and the singing um, uh, i don't know if if that's something that appeals to um, all uh, people who have left religion because uh, some people would eventually want that sense of community but eventually when you look at uh, atheists they have that uh, uh, reputation that you cannot hurt them because they act as cats or something to that effect. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they're, they're kind of a, a warm-up band. Uh, I, I know my son plays uh, bluegrass and mm. uh, it lives in California and frequently they will be warm-up for uh, at, at concerts and, mm -hmm. and so on. So uh, the uh, the music, while well, people are gathering, mm -hmm. and um, uh, with the expectation of people, of, of the speakers and notables that uh, are to follow. Right, right, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, it was also nice uh, on the way there seeing people from these groups uh, in a kind of a relaxed setting. We have seen people playing soccer very close to the mall uh, on our way on our way there. Um, um, there were also the tents for the exhibits. Um, I don't know if we have pictures of those. I, I sent some to, to Forrest. Um, the idea of seeing all these people gathered where you have some kind of a legitimacy for all these things where uh, um, in, in other settings sometimes you don't have it that that was uh, a really wonderful thing one thing that did strike me was um, the number of people so um, it, it was expected to uh, um, uh, have a, a large turnout which was true but perhaps um, in terms of numbers maybe it was uh, fewer than expected and uh, that by itself is, is, is an interesting fact um, um, compared to uh, what has happened in 2012 where they expected I don't know uh, 30,000 they mentioned <laughs> Uh, yeah, there have been various estimates, uh, uh, the um, uh, ranging from twenty thousand, uh, but then there were other uh, groups who um, were not very favorably uh, attuned to the theme, who said, "Well, there were only eight to ten thousand, and then others who were super enthusiastic who might have said thirty thousand. But apparently, there's there's no mechanism for actually trying to count people. Right, right, yeah. Um, well, looking at it, 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 based on the fact that you have the reflecting pool and people were basically scattered around the sides, maybe that by itself doesn't give a, a very good view of how things were. I, I think last time they were closer to the memorial and therefore they were uh, a little bit more packed, so you, you have a sense of more people, mm, which is a little bit hard to compare to the situation we had this year. But um, um, uh, it seems that, uh, based on estimates also that I've heard, that uh, um, they were talking about around ten to 15,000, but maybe uh, a little bit less. And it's a little bit hard to, to um, guess why this is so. It, it could have been that uh, um, this happened during the summer months, whereas the first one happened, I think, in March or April. And maybe if there were schools around, it was a little bit easier to have uh, people uh, uh, organize buses and so on, mm -hmm. whereas in, in, in the summer for schools. <laughs> and the expectation is going to be hot. Yeah, but but it also had to do maybe with um, um, with with the kind of speakers that uh, were there. So uh, um, um, Richard Dawkins was supposed to be there, and uh, right now he seems to be ill and wasn't able to show up in person and uh, sent a televised uh, message. Um, Johnny Depp was also supposed to be there, didn't show up. Um, and I guess when, when they look at celebrities, uh, um, and, uh, that's, uh, that's one magnet to, to get people to attend. And if you have uh, uh, these people not showing up, maybe that, that uh, reduces things. But um, maybe also the message that they were trying to convey this time compared to last time 
uh, was trying to uh, reach a broader public, not just the uh, um, atheist uh, community. And so that maybe dilutes the, the, the message and uh, distributes it between various groups that are not necessarily affiliated with the atheists. Yeah, because I, I, I think we atheists uh, cherish the idea of going there to see our heroes. <laughs> and, uh, so d were you able to, sp to get close to any of our heroes? Or? Well, um, the... At, at the time when uh, James Randi was uh, was talking, um, I was close to the podium, but I, I, I had not, no chance to actually talk to him. Um, uh, after the rally ha uh, finished, um, I, I personally went to uh, um, uh, a restaurant where I met some ex-Muslims who were prominent. One of them uh, is Mariam Namazi, who uh, also delivered a speech there. Um, um, and um, that that was uh, a really nice experience by itself, uh, having to actually interact personally with these people um, and uh, um, uh, get to know them a little bit better. Um, uh, but there, there there were in terms of the speakers. If if you look at the speakers, um, there were some interesting uh, uh, speeches. I I was personally very interested. Um, and um, uh, in seeing uh, Carolyn Porca speak, because um, for me, I before the, the the rally, I had no idea about her affiliation with uh, uh, free thinking and possibly uh, um, criticism of religion. And uh, uh, the way that I was thinking about her usually was in terms of her association with the space program. And uh, eventually, she was talking about women's rights, about uh, how uh, religion uh, 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 oppresses people, um, and so that 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 was uh, uh, a very nice thing to see that she was actually um, uh, very interested and very active in these things, uh, to a degree to uh, come to uh, this gathering and talk about it. Yeah. So. Uh, um, there are also others that uh, um, uh, I, I, I think were especially um, interesting. Uh, for example, uh, with uh, Penn Jillette. He uh, um, was very interested and very keen on introducing uh, a young woman who um, uh, was uh, in um, Ecuador's uh, Got Talent or something like that. Uh, a show that seems to parallel the one that uh, we have here in the U.S. And um, uh, the first question that they have in that show was uh, to ask the contestant, do you believe in God? You would think, well, what does that have <laughs> to do with anything? <laughs> and uh, she has, uh, um, okay, uh, it seems that we have a phone call. Oh, do we ready? Okay. Okay, speaker. Uh, welcome to Free Thought Forum, and thank you for calling. Could we have a name or a nickname, please? Oh, actually. <laughs> oh, you you can hear he's kind of hoarse there. <laughs> yeah, so I've been watching the show, and I'm so glad that you guys mentioned Carolyn Poco, but you didn't say what it was. Uh, please tell the viewers. Um, well, uh, she has uh, had uh, um, a lot to do with the Voyager uh, program. Cassini, uh, Cassini, come on. Oh, well, you're, you're right. I sit corrected. I'm, I'm, I'm in firm. You're, you're right. It began that well, way. Yeah. And um, uh, then she had an involvement with, uh, um, uh, w with the Cassini program. And... Um, um, all the uh, information that uh, uh, we have right now uh, about uh, uh, Saturn and uh, um, uh, a lot of the um, outer solar system uh, planets have something to do with, uh, uh, with her work. So I think her title is something like Principal Scientist of the Cassini mission. Yeah. And maybe it's Senior Principal Scientist. And... Um, you know, she's, uh, you know, in 
charge of the spacecraft that is probing Saturn and its moons and its rings, and it's been doing so for, man, it's over a decade now. Mm-hmm. And um, her teams and that instrument have led to the discovery of of these geysers on the moon. I think it's pronounced Enceladus. Yes. And, you know, yeah. it's just a marvelous thing. And, and uh, I, of all the speakers who are going to be there, that was the one that made me most wish that I could have been. Yeah. Um, um, but like I said, the, the fact that um, uh, she was uh, presenting things as a scientist, but also as an activist who was also interested in uh, uh, social issues, women's rights, um, uh, that was really uh, a, w a wonderful thing to, to, to see. Um, uh, there was um, a sentence that she said. She said, the more religious a society is, uh, the more it oppresses its uh, women. So uh, you can you can uh, uh, see the kind of correlation then that uh, um, uh, you would have between religion and uh, uh, the oppression of women, and that's unfortunately true. Uh, if you look at uh, history, if you look at uh, modern societies that still have uh, uh, religion as a prevailing uh, uh, social power, you can actually uh, see how women ri women's rights are uh, are not being uh, uh, given pr correctly. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is is a case in point, of course. All righty. Well, uh, once again, thanks for mentioning her, and uh, I'm going to uh, clear the line and hope you get a few other people who uh, call in who either went or, like me, wish they had gone. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Hope you feel better. Yeah. So, um, uh, so that 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 was w one of, one of the highlights. Um, another, like I was saying, was uh, when Penn Jillett was uh, introducing that uh, young woman, and the the context in which this happened was really interesting because, um, uh, like I said, she was uh, um, uh, going to that uh, program where uh, she is presenting a talent, and uh, the first question they asked. Do you believe in God? And she politely answered, "No." <laughs> and so <laughs> you have you have this uh, uh, polite young atheist, and then she uh, uh, gets this scolding from the judges. Um, it, it it sounds outrageous. I mean, uh, um, being interviewed or auditioning for a talent that has nothing to do with belief in God, and then. Um, uh, she um, gets embarrassed on stage because of something like this. Yeah, it really highlights the courage of uh, a person like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so uh, right after that, he introduces her because she came to the rally. Her name is uh, Carolina Pena. And um, uh, um, he um, uh, sings with her a song that he wrote. Um, uh, based on um, on one thing that uh, Hitchens uh, mentioned to him, I, I I don't remember it right now, and so that 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 was really a nice thing uh, uh, to listen to. I mean the um, uh, the different connections that uh, were made uh, um, during that presentation that 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 was really nice, and that's th that's that's one of the things where that shows the kind of things that. Uh, um, uh, non-believers and free thinkers have to actually uh, uh, go through and that happened simply in a situation where something like that was not supposed to happen in the first place um, she was talking about something completely different um, I, I think it is uh, probably a good time to um, look at our uh, program break here uh, <coughs> So, uh, <laughs> do you want to take the lead here, or? I uh, well. Uh, okay. Well, let me jump in. In case you are just tuning in, this is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Free Thought Forum is funded jointly by them and by individual contributions. Shows are live most uh, every Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Knoxville Community Access Television Channel 12 or channel 194, depending on your local cable network. Tell yeah. me, uh, 
uh, go, go ahead. I, I <laughs> tell your out of town friends to see us streaming online on ctvknox.org. Uh, today's show is live June 14th, uh, and you can call in at the number on our screen and speak to us as uh, Freethought just did. While we take a short play break, please watch these informative videos uh, about our sponsors. You live in or around the Knoxville area and are questioning your religious beliefs or simply believe in one less God than everyone else? Well, you're not alone. The Atheist Society of Knoxville is a fun and friendly group of people just like you that meets twice a week at a bar or restaurant. We meet every Tuesday night following the show at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria for happy hour. You'll find our group either inside or on the patio. Look for Richard Dawkins' silver-jacketed book, The God Delusion, standing upright on the table. On Fridays, we meet at Agave Azul or the Beard and Beer Market. But if you plan to preach, proselytize, provoke a punch, please don't. We all question what we believe at one point in our lives. If this is the time for you, come join us for food, drink, conversation, and fun. Do you find stories of talking snakes laughable? Do you prefer the scientific method over supernatural beliefs? Are you concerned about religious leaders and organizations imposing their values and rules on your body, your family, and the rest of our society? Well, take comfort in the fact that you're not alone. The Rationalists of East Tennessee meets weekly for fellowship and provides a forum for people who support skeptical thinking and rational discussion of these and other issues. To find out more information or to find out about our next meeting, visit us on the web at www.rationalists.org. Um, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, meets once or two times uh, a week. Uh, we have evening meetups um, uh, for fun, food, drinks, and conversation. As its purpose is to supply a venue for community, camaraderie, and outreach to atheists, agnostics, free thinkers, and other like-minded uh, persons in East uh, Tennessee area. Our uh, Tuesday meeting is going uh, on now at the uh, Barley Tap Room and Pizzeria in the Knoxville Old City area. Recently, some of us, uh, well, went to see the Star Wars movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, the second Sunday of most months is the Rationalist of East Tennessee Skeptics Book Club. The title of the next book, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, <coughs> Uh, this will be discussed on uh, Sunday, July 10th, July 10th now, at 2 p.m. Uh, public is invited uh, to participate. You need not have read the book to attend, but of course it helps. Visit rationalist.org to find the rest of the calendar of books and join us at our... It, it, we've been doing this for quite a while now at a uh, new location, uh, Books a Million, 8513 Kingston Pike, uh, here in Knoxville. Now, the uh, upcoming third Sunday meeting of uh, Rationalists, uh, Rationalists of East Tennessee will feature Professor Stuart Harris of the Appalachian uh, School of Law, and he will present a talk titled James Madison's Views on Religious Freedom. Professor Harris is the host of... Uh, your weekly constitutional uh, podcast. He teaches constitutional law at ASL. Before coming to the uh, Appalachian School of Law, he taught at the uh, University of Florida's College of Law. For the past several years, he has also taught constitutional law during the summer uh, semester at University of Tennessee College of Law. Also, uh, we want to remind you that on Sundays, every Sunday, uh, about the Free Thought Radio Hour uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. on WOZO 103.9 FM, hosted by Larry Rhodes. Now, uh, unfortunately, 103.9 uh, WOZO is a low-power uh, radio station, and uh, so it's uh, difficult to pick it up if you're uh, very far away from the center of Knoxville. However, you can look at, uh, you, you can still receive it over the internet if you go to wozoradio.com 
And uh, uh, there on the screen, there will say listen now. You can click that. And, Maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, so, in fact, you can get a whole schedule, weekly schedule for activities. I think we have a phone call. Maybe we can pick it up. Okay, here we go. Well, thank you for calling, uh, speaker, uh, caller. Uh, would you please give us a uh, name or nickname, please? It's Charles. I'm from Central Oh, hello, Charles. Yeah, I uh, wasn't able to attend the recent rally because of job commitments, but I have caught bits and pieces of it on YouTube and so forth. And I was, um, I noted that uh, due to the weather, uh, some of the photographs, everybody seems to be hiding under trees and so forth, something to do with heat stroke and so forth. Yeah, it was very hot. Uh, so it gave the impression there weren't that many people there. I never did get a proper head count. Yeah, it is. But I noted. Go ahead. No, uh, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, to a great extent, um, it, it was quite hot, and that might have been one of the reasons why not as many people as expected were there. Um, um, perhaps there are other reasons, like uh, we said, that have to do with, uh, uh, with the way that things were organized. Um, maybe the novelty of, of uh, uh, the reason rally went away after the first one. I don't know. But uh, you're absolutely right. It was hot, and we were trying to go under trees. Well, I don't think we need to be apologetic <laughs> about it. It was still uh, the, f the very fact that uh, it could be organized and held there absolutely. Uh, is, is significant. Absolutely. Now, uh, I noted that we had a number of really good speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, Shirley uh, Siegel did her songs. I think her name is Shelly Siegel yeah. did yes. her songs. Uh, Professor Dawkins sent a video because he had had a stroke and wasn't in, in the physical shape to travel and so forth. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. And and there were also other people like. Uh, uh, Bill Nye, who has uh, his own uh, uh, audience, um, Lawrence Krauss, um, um, a host of other people, in addition to a very nice um, presentation by uh, uh, James Randi about uh, uh, um, a very nice case that he was uh, uh, working on and that he uh, uh, helped expose, basically. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, m many of these people have local connections, for instance, uh, James Randi, uh, well, Joe Barnhart, who mm -hmm. is one of the, uh, who has been producer and frequent host, uh, worked with James Randi on uh, 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 unveiling the, uh, the the fraud that uh, went on in uh, some of these religious um, uh, yeah. kind of things. Uh, dog and pony shows is what I call them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, it's more than that. And then we've had Shelley Siegel on this program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wonderful songs. And uh, let's see, uh, Seth Andrews was wandering around. He's a thinking atheist mm -hmm. show, yeah. podcast, and he did some videos of the people there. And uh, so it, it looked like a pretty good event. Yeah, it, it was. In, in terms of uh, uh, the speakers, it, of course, it was a really nice mix, if, if you look at it from this perspective. Uh, uh, a really large variety of people from uh, uh, the very wider spectrum of what you can consider to be free-thinking uh, people uh, and uh, uh, people who are related in, uh, directly or indirectly. So it, it, it really was a, a very nice uh, uh, variety. Ah, and I, I understand that Ray Comfort was there <laughs> trying to hand out something <laughs> that nobody was really interested in getting. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I personally wasn't involved in this. <laughs> but uh, it had something to do with giving out, quote, gift certificates, unquote. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he was running a scam on his viewers. Well, his followers. Yeah. Look, even, even the atheists accept, accept the, 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 the divine something or other. So keep sending that man that money <laughs> is what I think was happening. Yeah. One one thing that uh, we we were a little bit um, um, 
uh, confused about initially was this uh, lady who was uh, um, talking about something called the atheist movie. First, we thought the atheist movie. Uh, first, she, w she, we thought that she was uh, basically promoting something about atheism. And then when she started talking to us, um, she was handing these bills that had uh, pictures of Trump and Hillary on them. Um, and it turned out that she was uh, basically promoting something that was religious. And she was uh, uh, trying to, to, to convince people to watch uh, whatever it is that uh, they have produced. Saw that something like comfort, the banana, the banana man and his sidekick with Paul. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. So apparently it was a pretty good event. It was definitely, yeah. The fact that we have, we've actually been able to get all these very friendly, different thinking people together at the same place in the same time twice is uh, quite amazing. Absolutely. Okay. I'll let somebody else call in. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, just kind of looking down the list, I see we've, we've had uh, Dan Barker mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, with telev television, uh, <laughs> telephone interview yeah. on this show. Um, so um, we, 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 we try to uh, bring you a kind of a national perspective here in East Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, um, um, and we, we had several people who went from Knoxville, and so I, um, I counted uh, uh, a at least 10 people from Knoxville. I'm not sure if, if there were more. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, we, during the break, we uh, were requested to invite young people to call in and uh, 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 tell us why they did or tell us if they went to the rally and uh, why they did not if they didn't. Or, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if, if there's some of you out here who uh, went to the rally, please, in the uh, few remaining minutes, please give us a call and uh, let's hear your perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, uh, it, the picture that we're looking at right now, it, that um, uh, when, when we went there, I went uh, with Brad Kelly and uh, Ryan Feely, and uh, we drove uh, from here to D.C. The, the drive by itself was very interesting. Um, uh, I, I got to know these two wonderful people very well. We talked endlessly about everything um, um, we we didn't even feel the drive it, it, it was really wonderful so when when we were entering uh, we uh, found this uh, truck that uh, had some preacher or some uh, somebody um, related to uh, preaching and uh, it had this uh, uh, slogan Jesus uh, asks you to repent or perish or something to that effect and uh, uh, there was uh, uh, another guy passing by. He thought that this was uh, uh, that we were affiliated in some way with this truck. Of course, we weren't. So he took our picture, and uh, then we ended up taking this uh, this picture for ourselves. Um, yeah. So um, um, there were also um, uh, um, other experiences um, uh, within. Um, uh, Within the rally itself, not not just the speakers, but also um, getting to know the people who were um, in the exhibits, the the vendors. Uh, we we had uh, uh, people represented there, like the Sunday Assembly, which is uh, directly related to the activity that we have here in Knoxville. Um, um, the Richard Dawkins Foundation was. Uh, uh, having uh, um, several cameras set up uh, to have people uh, record their statements in the openly uh, uh, secular campaign. Um, a lot of activity that was happening uh, around um, uh, the actual uh, uh, main stage. Um, so uh, um, seeing so many people interested, um, if um, I, I personally wanted to record that openly secular uh, uh, message, and it, it was a, a long line, 
so many people were interested in in in, in appearing in in that context. So that that was really nice. Yeah. Mm. So um, this shirt that <laughs> I'm wearing ended up uh, uh, going viral, and if you go to the um, uh, uh, Facebook page of uh, the American Humanist Association, you would uh, find uh, um, there's a picture here of uh, uh, me and another friend, an ex-Muslim. We got these from uh, the ex-Muslim uh, booth. Uh, the ex-Muslims of North America are co-sponsors of uh, uh, the Reason Rally, and they were represented there. And uh, uh, there was a, uh, another representative over there uh, um, of the ex-Muslims of the UK that was Maryam Namazi, who uh, delivered a wonderful, uh, uh, authentic speech about uh, um, how different uh, um, uh, countries were Muslim, uh, um, ex-Muslims are really facing a lot of uh, um, uh, persecution and are unable to basically speak out. And um, um, uh, right after the, the rally, I, I had the chance, like I said, to, to um, uh, sit with her and uh, with the widow of uh, uh, one of the bloggers in Bangladesh who was uh, uh, hacked uh, by uh, um, Muslim extremists. Um, and uh, um, there was also another activist, uh, Faisal Al-Mutar. Uh, um, he's... Uh, um, uh, he came from Iraq and uh, uh, went into asylum into the uh, in the U.S. and he's uh, uh, very active in um, uh, in movements.org. He has a lot of activity there, and so we discuss things that are related to our situation, basically as uh, uh, as ex-Muslims. And that by itself, for me, was another highlight uh, uh, after the rally that augmented this original uh, experience. It was really wonderful to uh, meet these people that I have been. In uh, communicating with over the internet and for the first time to actually be with them. Yeah. Yeah, again, if there's anyone out there who uh, is listening or watching and uh, went to the rally, uh, please give us a call in the minutes remaining. Um, <coughs> I, I notice uh, on, uh, on the list of uh, the uh, speakers, there was a councilman from uh, D.C., Dave mm -hmm. Grasso. Uh, were there m many other or any other uh, people active in the political area? Yeah, there was also... Um, oh, here's one, Maryland Senator yeah. Jamie Raskin. Yeah, so... Uh, <coughs> W with Dave Grosso, he he basically presented uh, uh, the case for DC. Now DC, of course, has a lot of special regulations uh, compared to other places, and uh, um, uh, uh, to to have a representative who wants to uh, uh, present the social issues that some of the secular people wanted uh, uh, heard, um, uh, um, and the angle that a secular would have. For the case of uh, uh, DC, that was also uh, uh, interesting. But for uh, uh, Jamie Raskin to uh, have an actual senator uh, uh, um, talk to uh, people in uh, uh, the language that they understand, the, the, ling the language of reason, the language of uh, secularism, uh, to see that uh, heard, that, that, that was uh, also uh, a very nice thing to see. Yeah, I, I, I guess I would encourage any of you out there who are free thinkers uh, to consider running for uh, a, a local uh, office just to get the message out. Uh, right. You know, recognizing that things are stacked against you still. Uh, the um, you, you have to plant the the seeds that uh, will perhaps bear fruit uh, in future years. Absolutely. Um, um, having so many people leave religion um, and not seeing any kind of uh, representation um, in terms of legislation and uh, other areas, that's, that's really <coughs> shameful. It's, uh, when, when, uh, when, um, uh, when Robin uh, uh, Blumner was talking, uh, she was describing how um, uh, uh, 
uh, Ted Cruz, I think, was uh, describing the person who was supposed to be uh, chief of staff as someone who opens his day with a prayer. Why, why would this be so? Why, why would that be a requirement for someone uh, to lead the country just to be someone who believes in, in, in some superpower? Who, who, who believes that some, something else is going to save uh, him or the country, him or her, or the country, rather than, than uh, uh, you know, careful consideration and reason of the situation. Absolutely. Um, um, I, I think the day will come when we when we will see uh, a bigger presence of uh, um, secular people, free thinkers, and even possibly uh, people who are openly atheists run for office. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon, uh, but um, it, it, it has to be coming. The, the, the demographic of the United States has been changing over the uh, past few decades, and the millennials are leaving religion. And so eventually, if you look at the kind of uh, makeup of the people, <coughs> it, it seems to be receptive to uh, the secular message and the one that... Uh, tries to uh, uh, really live up to the uh, uh, spirit of uh, secular governance. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, action can really change people's behavior. Uh, I know that uh, uh, RET has a, uh, in, in their area of activism, <coughs> has uh, uh, urged that uh, their uh, representative be put in the rotation for mm -hmm. uh, 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 the the introduction or the um, <laughs> it's terrible to get old uh, <coughs> invocation yeah and uh, uh, Alita Lindecker has yes. has frequently given uh, invocations and and. There have been instances where uh, council members got up and left, yeah. and uh, that in itself uh, offers an opportunity to uh, to bring attention to the prejudice that uh, yeah. is being expended. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that that kind of activity act is actually very important. Uh, uh, Robin Blumner also mentioned uh, in in her speech some, uh, something very similar, where she uh, was talking about. Uh, um, an atheist doing an invocation, and that was the tipping point for her, uh, I think, uh, in Tampa, um, where she ended up uh, uh, writing uh, um, against that situation where somebody walked out um, uh, because they uh, likened listening to an atheist uh, uh, to uh, having unprotected sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, <coughs> yeah, well, uh, things can change. Uh, we have actions of Crystal Myers some years ago over at uh, Lenore City High School who uh, opened the way for the current uh, Secular Student Alliance Club mm -hmm. that, that went through as a snap uh, when, when the people who uh, in power, realize what could happen. But it's time for our, to start wrapping things up, uh, Osama. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for those of you who uh, want to write to us, you can write down uh, contact information. Uh, and um, could you tell us how, what the contact might be in 30 seconds? <laughs> uh, okay. So um, you can uh, leave a voice message at 865 Two seven two nine zero six zero, or you can email us at freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. Okay, and you can see this show's Tuesday from 5 to 6 Eastern uh, on the Knox, this Knoxville station, or uh, uh, view us uh, CTV. <laughs>